Hello and welcome to Grotto of Economics. I am Dr. Bauer. Our topic today is Purchasing Power Parity, PPP for short. Now what is Purchasing Power Parity? Purchasing Power Parity is the amount of adjustment that is needed on the exchange rate between countries in order for the exchange rate to be equivalent to each currency's purchasing power. Now, when we talk of purchasing power parity, we talk of three main things. Number one, the foreign exchange market rate. Number two, the inflation rate or the cost of living. And number three, the PPP exchange rate. In other words, how can we adjust the foreign exchange market rate, taking into account the cost of living so that it is equal to a certain purchasing power parity exchange rate. To address uh, uh, this topic, uh, we want to look at an example um, whereby uh, the foreign exchange market rate is lower, so lower foreign exchange market rate. Take a pair of jeans that cost, say, uh, 20 pounds in the UK and $40 in the US. Now, based on these prices, the pound to dollar exchange rate would be one dollar equivalent to two dollars. Assume, however, that the foreign exchange market rate is one pound being equivalent to one dollar fifty cents. What would this mean in terms of PPP exchange rate? Uh, this means that based on the prices in the different countries, the foreign exchange market rate has and the valued the pound by 50 cents, showing a depreciation of the pound, or overvalued the dollar by 50 cents, showing an appreciation of the dollar. Thus, the percentage of pound undervaluation or dollar overvaluation is 25%, which means that we must adjust the foreign exchange market rate by 25% so that it is equal to the purchasing power parity exchange rate. What then should be the purchasing power parity exchange rate? In other words, what should be the actual foreign exchange market rate? A PPP exchange rate should be the prices exchange rate of one pound equal to $2 and not the foreign exchange market rate of one pound equal to one dollar fifty cents. So what is the significance of this? Number one, it shows that similar goods in the two countries have prices that deviate from the foreign exchange market rate. Number two, hence inflation or the cost of living is different in the two countries. Number three, in this case, inflation is relatively higher in the US. Four, therefore, consumers buying dollars with their pounds must get a bit more dollars to compensate them for the inflation in the US. Five, and consumers buying pounds with their dollars must pay a bit more dollars to compensate the seller of the pounds for the inflation in the US. Now, now let's look at a, a situation where the foreign exchange market rate is higher. We have, we have a higher foreign exchange market rate. So uh, going back to our example uh, before, uh, cost of uh, jeans in the, U, in the UK, 20 uh, pounds, the same pair of jeans in the US, $40. So we have, um, uh, a prices exchange rate of one pound equal to two dollars. Yeah. So what if the foreign exchange market rate is one pound equivalent to uh, two dollars and twenty cents? What would this mean in terms of PPP exchange rate? So based on these prices in the different countries, the foreign exchange market rate has overvalued the pound by twenty cents 
showing an appreciation of the pound or and the value of the dollar by 20 cents showing a depreciation of the dollar. That the percentage of pound of valuation or dollar under valuation is 10%. We must adjust the foreign exchange market rate by 10% to get the PPP exchange rate. What then should be the PPP exchange rate? In other words, what should be the actual foreign exchange market rate? The PPP exchange rate should be the prices exchange rate of one pound equivalent to two dollars and not the foreign exchange market rate of one pound equal to two dollars twenty cents. What then is the significance of this? Number one, it shows that similar goods in the two countries have prices that deviate from the foreign exchange market rate. Number two, hence inflation or the cost of living is different in the two countries. Number three, in this case, inflation is relatively lower in the US. Number four, therefore consumers buying dollars with their pounds must pay a bit more pounds to compensate for the fact that inflation is relatively higher in the UK. And five, consumers buying pounds with their dollars must pay a bit less dollars to compensate for the fact that inflation is relatively higher in the UK. So what are the implications of PPP exchange rate? Number one, the rate of inflation affects a country's purchasing power parity exchange rate. A higher rate of inflation will lead to a higher PPP exchange rate, and a lower rate of inflation will lead to a lower PPP exchange rate. Number two, a higher rate of inflation that leads to a higher PPP exchange rate will then lead to a relatively higher recorded PPP gross domestic product. This also means a relatively higher PPP GDP per capita. Number three, a lower rate of inflation that leads to a lower PPP uh, 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 exchange rate will then lead to a relatively lower recorded PPP gross domestic product. This also means a relatively lower PPP GDP per capita. So look at the implications of, uh, uh, of PPP exchange rate. Let's take two countries, okay, and look at their, their data for 2019. So in this table, we have um, the UK uh, and Argentina, okay, and we have their GDP per capita and PPP GDP, GDP per capita for the year 2019. We can see that the uh, UK's um, GDP uh, uh, per capita uh, uh, was forty two thousand seven hundred and forty seven dollars, and PPP GDP per capita was forty nine thousand uh, forty one uh, um, dollars. Yeah, uh, with an inflation rate of one point eight percent. One point eight percent. You can see that um, the um, PPP GDP per capita is just um, um, about six thousand, just around six thousand. Um, um, higher than GDP per, GDP, uh, per, per capita, the normal GDP per capita, yeah, just around around, around 6,000 roughly. Yeah, and that uh, is based on, on an inflation rate of 1.8%. Now, when we look at Argentina, their GDP per capita is 9,963, but their PPP GDP per capita is $23,003. You can see that um, the PPP GDP per capita is more than double the normal GDP per capita. So the PPP GDP per capita is more than double the normal GDP per capita. And that is on the back of a, of a very, very high rate of inflation of 53.8%, 53.8%. So we can see how a uh, PPP uh, uh, exchange rate do impact on the country's GDP uh, as well as GDP per capita. Thank you so much for watching uh, this video. Uh, please do subscribe uh, uh, to Growth of Economics okay, for more 
topical issues and more topics in economics. Thank you and bye.